Hey guys, welcome to Celia's Playlists. I am here with BXRI today, a pop hip hop artist from Omaha, Nebraska. And I am not centered, but I am actually so excited because this is our first interview. My camera disconnected and I, uh, I am going to start that over. So hold up one second. I just am making sure that the All right, can I can see you. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay, cool. All right. Let me do that again. These laptops have that little thing with the adapters and like the I moved it to center myself and then it just like totally threw everything off. All right. So, if I'm going to sit here, this is centered. Amazing. All right. Hey guys, welcome to Celia's Playlists. I'm so excited because today is the first interview that we're doing uh, for our playlist project. I am here with BXRI, a pop hip hop artist from Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm so excited to hear more about BXRI and, you know, everything about you. So welcome, welcome. Hey, how's, how are you doing today? It's, it's a good day. It's a busy day. How about you? Um, I'm staying busy as well, you know, always producing, um, just wanted to take some time out of here to let everybody know who I am and hopefully, you know, see if people could join that playlist that we're pushing. So. Of course, of course. So, uh, I'm going to pop you up full screen. Tell me a little bit yeah. about, uh, you know, your, your style and, uh, what, what exactly it is that you. Yeah. So what I do um, for music is I create pop hip hop. So I have inspiration that stems from Bruno Mars with his high pitch vocals um, all the way down to Buster Rhymes and his lyricism. And I kind of use all of my theories of music to develop a pop hip hop alternative sound. Um, I explore different cadences, different rhythms and flows in order to um, keep an audience engaged throughout the whole song from start to finish. Um, it's, it's, it's a job of mine to always practice what I perform and so I always write down everything I do, um, every lyric, and I perfect my melodies in order to create that that perfect blend of pop and hip hop. That's awesome. And I know that's such a big style right now. You know what I mean? Pop, hip hop crossover. And I would love to hear a little bit more about like, you know, where, where, where your writing process is. Where do you start? Uh, and like, I know that there's like a lot of different ways that people could go about this, but I would love to hear your way. Yeah, that's a great question. So for my creating process, when I'm writing music, um, I would I love to just work listening to my beat, my instrumental first, whether that's something that I have a producer send me um, or I'm in the works of making something myself. I always try to develop exactly what parts of the songs are going to be uh, monumental in order to drop a chorus into and then immediately switch my cadence to creating bars so that I can keep the rhythmic changing. Um, it's for me, it's a style where I just have to catch a feel for a beat. Once I catch the feel and I have a moment where I'm just alone locked into my music, um, the, the writing creation almost happens on its own. I write about my life. I write about perspectives of other people's experiences as well. So I have a very open world view on, on music in my lyrics. And I feel like that helps my creative process. Just not keeping everything um, strictly down to, to one topic, you know, you take one topic and you branch it out into, into multiples. And it's just, it's just a process for me that, that I've always used in every song that I've written. So I know that like, you know, 
the, that you're talking a lot about the writing process. Is this something that uh, comes to you naturally, or is it something where you like sit down and you're like, I gotta, I gotta bang out this song? Like, when you're writing, where does your inspiration come from? When I'm writing music, I get inspiration simply from the feeling I get from listening to that song. Um, it it brings out an emotion in me, whether it's joy, sadness. And I correlate that to my experiences and I just begin to write. The writing process can be on and off for me. I do freestyle as well. But when I create these projects for my albums, you know, it could take either I sit down in the studio with an engineer and it takes me 20 minutes to write. And then I'm already practicing my melodies as opposed to when I'm at home in my own studio, it can take me a couple of hours to just keep replaying a beat until I find the perfect setting that I'm looking for. Um, sometimes you have a feeling of what you wanna write about, but you just don't know exactly what the words are yet. And finding the middle ground is, is honestly, I feel like a personal experience to everybody. I've always loved to read books. Um, I read every day. And for me, note taking has always been a big part of my life academically. And so when it comes to music, just writing, writing comes quick to me. And it's just the best process for me. So I want to ask you, I want to kind of backtrack a little bit. Okay. What, uh, what inspired you to become a, you know, an artist, like a, a musical artist? Because I feel like everyone has an interesting origin story and I would love to hear where your inspiration came from. Yeah. So my inspiration for music now, as I started to push my music a little more professionally in this past year comes from my brother, my older brother, uh, CeeLo Stacks. He's a pop artist from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, ever since we were kids, he's always performed, made music, um, and set, had sit downs with people, you know, talking about possible signings with him. And I've always looked up to him when it came to music. Um, he's always encouraged me to create, always asked for my opinion on his songs. And for me, writing music has always been a hobby. Poetry has always been a hobby, something that was healing for me. Um, and after creating my first EP with my brother, uh, My Word on Drugs, which is consisting of my songs, Casamigos, Pop Star, and Candy Paint. Those were created with him in the studio. Um, we worked on that EP for about a week straight. And, you know, that's the last, that's the last project I ever worked with my brother. He passed away last year and it was a very hard time for me in my life. And so it's kind of fueled me to use all of that grief and all of the creation thus far since his passing that I wanted to send for it, send to him, you know, like, please, like every time I made a song, I would send it to him and we would just talk about it. And I don't have that no more. So every time I create a song, it's almost like I'm keeping that, that relationship in the back of my mind and I'm letting it fuel me to, to just put the best possible music I can out every single time. This is a really cool way to honor your brother. And I, I'm, I'm glad that you're able to, you know, take this thing that was so special to both of you and continue that in your music. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay. very special, very special bond. Of course. And I, I'm glad that we, we, you know, jumped into that because now let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, your progress over the last year. I know that you've put out some music and I know that you've been in the studio and writing. Uh, so what what have been some of your highlights this year? Yeah, this past year has been a roller coaster and the music has been a blessing. Um, over the past year, I've started off from just posting music on the SoundCloud, my own mixes, and it developed into the point where meeting with my brother back from Cleveland. I worked with his engineer, Yay Made It in Cleveland, Ohio, very renowned engineer, um, mixed music for some very, very uh, popular artists for 2024. And the energy that I had gotten from there just sparked so much more that I wanted to create. And for ever since then, flying back home to Omaha, I have decided to invest my money into my own studio. I decided to do open microphones around town and just try it as much as possible to practice. Um, I finally landed a show back in December where I performed for an artist showcase and it was a great experience. I got to meet Christian gospel artists, pop hip hop artists and promoters, managers. And from there going forward, I have also created music with other artists in Rhode Island who I plan on this year going out to shoot a music video with. 
and um it's just been great it's only been up from up from here so would you say that like you know being a part of a community uh locally has has helped you out as an artist I would feel that the local community have, plays a big part in becoming an artist because there's this stigma that a lot of people these days can easily just, you know, become somebody on the internet. But essentially, you still need to get down to the practice. You need to get down methodic, um, method, methodically how are you going to actually present yourself as a musician. And I feel like working locally with local artists, local talent, um, promotions and shows, it gives you that experience you need. And... And it's great because you never know who might li be living down the street from you who also is growing an audience. And that's right there is the collaboration you guys can use for each other to grow. Um, I feel like the local scene in Cleveland, Ohio is amazing. There's a lot of support, a lot of great talent out there. And the local scene in Omaha is nothing but support. Um, as opposed to meeting people on the internet through threads, playlisting, through your radio channel, you know, the engagement in the community is only growing, but the local aspect is very important for aspiring musicians. I like that you bring up the uh, the online aspect too, because uh, I am a very active member in my local community, but I also am someone that provides, uh, as you mentioned, like opportunities online for people. I feel like, you know, both of them have their value and it's just about making sure that you're kind of feeding both audiences so that you can grow on both sides. So that's kind of how I take it. And I was wondering, with the artist that you met in Rhode Island, how did you meet that person? Yeah, so I didn't actually meet uh, my friend yet. His name is Fargo, but I met him on threads, on Instagram threads. It was a great, it was great. Like all I did was post one of my songs with a little snippet of me, like practicing it. And he loved it, DM'd me on Instagram. He was like, hey brother, I would love to write a song with you. He sent me an open verse. I got it done virtually the next week. And since then, we've just been in communication. He's a good friend. I just feel like just being open with people, taking opportunities as they present themselves is so important as a musician. You know, opportunities missed, you might not get again. And the people that are willing to just work with you out of because they like you and they like your sound as opposed to trying to get a budget out of you. Like, those are the people you truly want to put your time into. Um, so, yeah, Fargo's a good friend. Hopefully, I plan to see him later this year to make that music video happen. I totally agree with you because I have my own collaborations that I've done for the same reasons. And it's always a great time because everyone's in it for the creativity. Everyone's in it because they want to make something together. So I'm glad that that happened. And I'm, I'm glad that you found that on Threads because I feel like everyone's been getting a really, really great response on Threads because it's people who want to collaborate rather than people who are just promoting. And that's kind of what I've noticed. Yeah, the collaboration aspect on Threads is beautiful. Um, compared to other social media platforms, I feel like um, instead of musicians trying to force engagement, um, there's more opportunity on Threads. I've met promoters, I've met playlisters, artists wanting to do open verses. It's, it's a constant growth, and I think it's only going to continue growing because aspiring musicians are going to look for that next platform. And I feel like Threads is definitely where, where you want to be right now. 100%. And I think that it's going to continue that way because the types of people that are on there, I feel like, uh, you know, because it is a text platform, like a written platform, it is, uh, you know, drawing people that like to write things and like to share things. So I think that that kind of makes it a lot easier for creatives to get on there. Um, but I, 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 I do have one more big question for you, and it is, what would be your advice to someone that is starting out within their music career right now? Whether that is writing, whether that is, you know, creating things for online, whatever it may be. What is your advice to someone that wants to start? If you're an aspiring musician and you want to start making music, you want to create an audience, you want your voice heard outside of your normal bubble, just keep working. Don't stop whether it's the writing process, the production process, not knowing how to PR, the moment you stop working is when you'll never get there. You need to just consider yourself as the hardest working person you know. Once you put yourself in a position to work harder than everybody else in your field, 
you're going to start seeing success run straight to you. And this is coming from someone who I don't have an audience. I don't have my own publishing or anything, but I have been seeing growth every single day with my music. And I've been meeting individuals who make amazing music, who want to feature me on a song. It's about a daily progress and you just have to commit yourself to it. That is definitely great advice. I love that. And I think that, you know, I think Threads as a whole has been something that's been very helpful to, I guess, the independent artist industry. And I'm glad that you've been getting the traction that you've been getting on there. I know that we met through Threads and that's that's how we got here right now. And I know that I yes. added uh, some of your music to the Void playlist. I believe I have it over here. Um, I believe that it's Tip Tiara and Nosebleed that I put on there. Uh, would you like to tell everyone a little bit about those two songs real quick um, so that they can uh, take, a, take a, a, a dive into the void and check out your music? Yeah, I'd love to. So starting with my single Nosebleed, um, that is a project that was created off of an emotion. I simply just was playing this lucky tight beat. I fell in love with it. And I started to freestyle with the microphone on. I think I did like maybe two takes over the whole beat, just freestyling on it, doing harmonies. And it wasn't until I hit a certain point where I was like, wow, I think this might just be like the best like chorus for this. And so I immediately sent it over to my to my friend, Blesters. Uh, he's the engineer, mixing and mastering artist over in New Jersey. And he dropped the feature on it literally only took him an hour or two, mixed and mastered it to completion. And it just turned out to be one of those lo-fi hip hop type songs that you can just keep replaying in your car late night. Um, it was so much fun creating that song. And I think people will definitely enjoy listening to it um, with some friends. Um, now coming to my single tip, Tiara, that was a song that I honestly did not expect anybody to like. It's just one of those songs where you just write about your life and you let all of your emotions flood onto the page. It's very pop oriented. Um, and yeah, it's my most engaged and most streamed single today. I just feel that I've always had a love for pop music and singing, you know, um, as opposed to rapping. And I feel like people tend, were drawn towards that pop that pop aspect more than the than the than the hip hop. So I was ex I was ex I was excited and I was surprised. I didn't expect to TR for anybody to like that song. So I'm very happy that I met an audience. That's the most beautiful thing about the internet. There's an audience for everything. So I'm glad that you found that audience. And speaking of audience, uh, where can people follow you? Where can people find you? Where can people find your music? And uh, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you if they want to do a collab? If the if you're ever looking to collab with me, um, you can just contact me on Instagram or email me at bxristudios at gmail.com. And if you're ever just wanting to say hi or stop in and see how I'm doing, um, you can follow me on Instagram. All my music's on Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, SoundCloud. And yeah, just contact me, say hi. You know, I'm always willing to meet new people. So I'm not going to shy away from a DM. I answer everybody. Thank you so much for being a part of our interview show. And thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and talk with me. I love that I get to like, you know, speak to people face to face now because, you know, the internet, I, I, I see everyone's names pop up, but it's not always the same as getting to know you guys in person. So thank you for taking the time and I wish you so much luck. Uh, you sound like you had an amazing like past year, but I think 2024 is going to be a really awesome one for you. Thank you so much, Celia. It was a blessed opportunity to meet with you today. And I'm definitely going to be looking forward to see who else you have on the interview. Um, a lot of great talent is out there. So I'm watching. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of really cool people. We got a lot of response, which is amazing. And I'm excited to bring all of those to you. So uh, thank you for being our first interview. And uh, that's it for this episode. Bye, guys. All right. Take care. Have fun. Bye-bye.